Welcome to 2021. It has been more than a year since I have managed to pull off a game of Global Access and Allies 1940 Second Edition. Thank you, COVID, but trying to pull one off today and hopefully we'll capture the action for you. And as always, we begin with the initial setup of the board. Turn. All right, halfway through turn one, we've got uh, Japan has not done a J1. Uh, it has in fact pulled into China, dumping the entire Navy uh, down here into 36. Uh, with these folks here left on the mainland, on the European side of the map, Germany has uh, done things a little bit differently from what I normally do. We've got uh, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria here taken with force, as well as Normandy. Um, and uh, we lost one plane, I think, in Paris, since I sent aircraft into Paris this time around. Um, two subs went to Canada in order to take that, and one survived. And that's where we stand halfway through turn one. At the beginning of turn two, we have completed a full round of play. The U.S. still not at war. Uh, congregating a bit here in Hawaii. Also uh, branching out into Wake Island with the folks that were at Hawaii. And that's about all they did on that side of the board. Um, Anzac um, took advantage of Java to increase its income. Calcutta has uh, built up infantry, as you might expect, spread its navy around, and participated in a raid into Ethiopia, which uh, preemptively squished most of the Italian presence there, uh, with just the one guy in Kenya left. And of course, the final indignity there, the uh, French destroyer in 72, uh, was there to convoy that one IPC. Um, now we see that he's up here. The Italians retrenched a bit into Libya. The French have brought their plane down from London and gathered here in Algeria. Uh, Italy decided to leave the French Navy alone so that it could go for its three territory IPC bonus there, taking uh, Greece, Southern, and Gibraltar by throwing away that transport, basically saving the rest of the Navy. Uh, and keeping it uh, tussled nicely there with uh, southern uh, Italy so that it could be uh, protected by a scramble. The Taranto uh, raid from London was uh, pretty successful, pretty strong leave there with uh, those ships and planes all remaining. And uh, of course we've got the Wall of Pain built up here in Russia uh, with uh, a six tank purchase. So there's a lot of offensive capability here along the Ural Mountains. And uh, I didn't mention this last time, but Germany went with uh, what I guess is the new hotness for Germany, buying three planes as, as its initial build. Um, and of course, taking enough territories uh, so that it could end up with a total of 70 IPCs to spend on round two. Um, London has purchased a couple infantry, some more Air Force there with another Strat bomber. And we see the uh, they've taken back the Canadian waters. U.S. doing what it can do on turn one. How's that 70 IPC is going to be spent by Germany here on round two? Halfway through turn two, we just completed Japan's turn. And it has uh, committed itself to swinging around the Straits of Malacca and dumping all its capital ships anyway over here underneath Burma. Those are uh, units still on the transport. We've not yet declared war against the UK, uh, but those swung around. All the other Navy and transports from Japan have all come down to season 36, built the two bases in Quang Si, expanded out to China, um, as one does in that situation. Over on the European map, Russia is maintaining the Wall of Pain, along the Urals, um, sticking a guy back in Karelia, but otherwise uh, not 
engaging the Germans, keeping a, a moat between the two. And uh, Germany buying 10 transports with its uh, 70 IPCs uh, following the kind of suggested moves. Uh, should give a shout out to Gargantua on the Axis and Allies garrison page. Um, for the idea of that build, uh, we'll see how it turns out. Um, still obviously uncertain what's going to happen here on the rest of turn two, whether that makes it a good idea to continue with that strategy or not. Uh, but uh, so far it's interesting. And we reached the beginning of round three. The U.S. here is kind of guarding the backfield in the Pacific, splitting between Hawaii and the Australian waters. Um, well, Japan sits virtually empty over there. The UK destroyer in 37 skedaddled over to its friends and the Japanese for, uh, you know, as we saw before, for reasons that will hopefully become clear, um, shot past there, positioned themselves off of Burma. Now they've got another fleet down here. Um, the Anzacians, of course, uh, gobbling up the money islands and doing pretty darn well for themselves. Anzac also electing at the uh, beginning of its combat phase to declare war on Japan, just so it could declare it could gather its bonuses, which it did, and uh, up to 24, which is pretty good for Anzac. Calcutta just turtling, waiting for uh, the inevitable to come. UK uh, bottling up in Cairo as well, now having a pretty sizable force, both naval and uh, ground troops there. Italy kind of scooting over to the other side. Now here in the Med, uh, the Italians were able to clear out the French Navy, but the French actually retaliated with the plane that came from London last turn into Algeria. This time uh, ended up trading itself for the cruiser that was left in 92. Uh, now Italy has only the two subs that it purchased this last turn uh, to show for its Navy. Uh, but for the moment, the Met is still clear. London bought... Two planes and five guys, uh, adding some oomph to that island and retreating its planes, uh, its strap bombers rather, up to uh, Iceland, while uh, the U.S. positions some strap bombers nearby as well. The Navy is building up. That's a whole mess of transports there off the coast of the U.S. Now we get to find out what Germany has in mind for round three. Well, we're halfway through turn three, and Japan's strategy has come to fruition here. Um, with an unobstructed path to Calcutta, we dumped everything from season 36 and 38 into India, taking that territory. Now, you'll notice it was a heck of a fight still, even with all those land and air units. Uh, there were, what, 19 infantry there, plus a few other things, a couple planes. AA guns, and uh, that one tank was left. We ended up losing five fighters on top of that. So it was not a costless victory. It was, uh, there's some bloodshed, but we got the Calcutta, got the bonus and the capital, the victory city. Um, things are looking good for Japan. Um, combine that with the fact that over here on this side of the board, uh, the other UK capital also fell. So all 11 of those transports dumped themselves into London, and uh, that battle actually went quicker um, with the uh, forces that were there and brought to bear. I think London went down in two turns, so um, that one rolled well. Uh, Russia still uh, keeping the wall of pain along the Urals here, so Germany at the same time it launched on London uh, also took these buffer states and... Uh, Russians responded by taking them back and keeping them buffer states. So there's still a healthy bit of separation between the two powers here uh, while Germany retools its efforts uh, towards the east. Will the Allies uh, be able to bounce back here on the rest of turn three? All right, as we begin round four... We see that the Americans have begun an island hopping campaign, 
bringing their folks up to Caroline's and taking that handily uh, while inching closer over here uh, via Midway uh, to closing the pincers on Japan. Anzac building up its Navy. It uh, took Dutch New Guinea to get its bonus. Building a carrier now, so it's uh, getting into the big leagues. Not much left for UK to do, although it did handily repel an attack from Italy. So Italy sent its remaining navy, those two subs, in the air that could get there uh, to attack this fleet, which took a bite out of the med just to take away Italy's bonuses, and Italy boffed that one, lost the two subs, retreated the planes, and uh, accomplished nothing. So what remains of England uh, still has some potency to it. Uh, well, in the meantime, the Americans have brought down everything that they could, taken Gibraltar handily, and uh, started landing some uh, UK strap bombers there as well. There's another carrier coming from the US, but uh, that's the extent of it. Um, down here, of course, so I didn't say it out loud last time, but uh, biggest strategical mistake I've made in the game is leaving those transports open, all 10 of them, 11 of them. Um, when I had the opportunity, instead of building as I did, 10 mechs on, in Germany could have built some ships out of Normandy to insulate those transports. Um, sure, they did their job, but that's 70 IPCs at the bottom of the ocean, and that's never worthwhile, uh, never a good idea. So that said, I mean, it's not like Germany doesn't need land units right now, because it really does. But it could have spared some ships, and would have been nice. Will that be enough to slow down Germany's advance on round four? We shall see. Halfway through turn four, and we see the aftermath of UK's fall. So Japan has uh, spread out some destroyer blockers here to give its Navy some breathing room um, from both this American fleet and this one as well. We've primarily this turn focused on taking the Money Islands, which uh, we're successful in, and... Um, position ourselves to defend against whatever may come, swinging most of the Navy back to 36 here and get a little flexibility, um, having to spread out in a few different places just to uh, accomplish the Money Island grab. Uh, the Chinese and the Russians, of course, are coming hard into China. Uh, I see that the Russians have taken Manchuria, as one might have expected, but hopefully we'll Hold them back from coming too much further. On this side of the board, the Russians have now finally consolidated into an enormous stack here in eastern Poland. That's 24 infantry and a whole bunch of other stuff um, after Germany brought mostly everything that it could down to Romania in order to hold off what had been a pretty big horde there in Bessarabia too. So we did the... Um, kind of the moat back here, the buffer zone and Baltic states and eastern Poland again. Um, Germany taking those and Russia taking them back, but now we have a different dynamic with eastern Poland full of guys. Germany uh, really kind of reinforcing the land units this turn, both in London and uh, on the mainland too, in anticipation of whatever the allies might bring here on the rest of turn four. All right, at the beginning of turn five, we've uh, decided to call the game. And uh, here's where it stands now. The Americans combined their forces up into Iwo Jima, doing some, you know, impressive island hopping during the course of the game. Um, the blockers there, of course, prevented them from getting to Japan. So um, Japan used all six of its uh, kamikaze attacks on this carrier. Only one of them hit, but that's all I needed because then the planes on there weren't able to land. Um, you know what? We actually, we landed these two planes here um, from Midway, but that was a, land, a, a territory America just took, so that's actually a mistake. Those planes can't be there anyway. Regardless, doesn't really matter. There's not a uh, air base there, so they couldn't scramble if I were to come in and try and wipe out this Navy, which fairly decent chance of accomplishing. Um, with those transports up there, 
um, these here. We actually didn't take Anzac's turn. They would have wiped out these transports down here. That's okay. The Money Islands pays for those transports in one turn. Um, these guys are definitely going to take Philippines this turn. Um, this Navy is not going to last much longer, and there's nothing coming up behind it. So it's just a couple turns until we take Hawaii and get the last victory city on the Pacific map. So we're calling it for, you know, that reason alone. Here, um, the, the Chinese stack here is coming in. They're, they're a nuisance. They'll last a couple turns until Japan's able to, to root them out or not. Doesn't, almost doesn't matter. Um, in the European front, so the what remained of the British Navy did make a, a, a good last effort here. Took uh, Greece coming up from the med, but uh, the Italians this time uh, vindicated themselves with the air fleet and uh, wiped them out still with a bomber left over. So those guys are stranded. They're not going very far. Uh, this Russian stack is enormous. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a good slog back and forth, but, and, and Russia's making a good amount of money like they do, um, especially since they're getting the bonuses here up in Scandinavia, but Germany's making a ton of money itself. Uh, it was able through its builds to hold on to England. The uh, U.S. didn't try to take it because I was able to get ahead of the curve there and build enough to hold it so those land units can just sit there. Those planes aren't going to need to babysit London anymore, and they'll be able to come out. Um, this turn, America ended up uh, dumping all of its land units from Gibraltar into Normandy, but, you know, Germany's ready for that. They've got mechanized units there in Germany and a ton of Air Force ready to just uh, wipe those guys off the map. Um, there, the backup fleet here, the transports in the Europe are two turns out and with London not coming back America is now forced to put everything they have into the Atlantic fleet you know just to have a chance of making a dent over here which means they're not paying any attention to the Pacific they don't have the resources to do that which means we're going to get those victory cities so again you know writing's on the wall that's where we're, we're headed so this ended up being an execution of more or less the uh, the London uh, Sea Lion strategy, as I mentioned, discussed in the most recent uh, ANA Garrison video with Gargantua that ended up working out well. Um, you know, could have gone either way, depending on how different choices and different roles had gone, but this turn it worked out well. Combining that with the Calcutta Crush so that both UK capitals can get taken on turn three. Uh, turned out to be pretty effective. I think that uh, my opponent here, once he has seen this done once, he's not going to let that happen again. So, for example, just that one destroyer that had been here in 37, right? If that had stayed there on turn three and I declare war on the UK, then this fleet of four transports that's in Hainan can't get past it. It has to take that out. So... I'm stuck without all of those land units, and, you know, as it turned out, I needed all those land units. I still lost a bunch of air units over here, and I'm not sure I could have taken that uh, capital on turn three without all those land units. So what probably would end up happening is, at a minimum, I'm going to have to stop, take out that blocker, and that delays me a turn, and maybe enough to, to hold Calcutta while it beefs up, and then the Americans and Anzac... Um, put pressure on Japan's back door and they're not able to push all the way to Calcutta. Just There are a number of ways. Once The Calcutta, Calcutta Crush strategy works once, um, but there are a number of ways to throw it off once you've seen it. So I got I to gotta imagine if we try this again that uh, it wouldn't go the same way. Um, able to get it done this time, but perhaps not again. Um, Italy was pretty ineffective over here. Um, uh, UK certainly was able to get ahead. I think it, it ended up being, you know, a good move to, to preemptively take out Ethiopia. And then these guys just ended up turtled up here um, and not really accomplishing anything. Of course, that depleted uh, Calcutta's Navy, but with the size of the Navy coming, 
would that have made a difference? I don't know. Um, over here, you know, Anzac, we're just uh, playing here. Uh, this is my opponent's first time playing the Pacific board at all. So uh, you, you got to give it to him for what he was able to accomplish over here. Um, and, you know, first time uh, playing, realized that uh, ought to take some of these free Danish money islands. So uh, Anza was actually, you know, gearing up to go pretty well. It, it, it cashed in pretty fast on those money islands and was building up to do something good. Um, just didn't come together with uh, the combined fleet. Uh, I would recommend next time America be a little bit more aggressive here in the Pacific. So a couple turns, you know, America was, was down here in Australia. Um, problem with that, I mean, it ended up, I mean, this was part of his strategy. So, you know, not to say that it wasn't the right strategy, but it, for, for what he was trying to accomplish, he was able to island hop, take Carolines, uh, Iwo Jima, and, and such, uh, and that worked out, that would have worked out, you know, decently well if there was the backup uh, able to be put into the Pacific behind it. Um, but what ended up happening, since I'm doing the Calcutta Crush, and I'm putting all this Navy over here on this side of the board, and America's strategy has them down here, uh, kind of holding the backfield with Australia, that leaves all this middle area of the Pacific open, and America's putting no pressure on me here in Japan. Uh, so I have no qualms about going to Calcutta because I know I've got plenty of time to get back. And in fact, that's exactly what ended up happening, right? I've got most of the fleet back here in C-Zone uh, 37, or 36 rather, and plenty of time to get to Japan and help hold it before any American fleet actually shows up there. So instead, if the American fleet had been uh, piled up here in Hawaii, um, this entire time, I would have felt a lot less secure going into Calcutta because uh, I know that it just takes one turn for them to come knocking on my home door. So again, uh, having seen the strategy now, the strategies always work best the first time when you don't know to anticipate them. And, and like I said, this is my opponent's first time playing uh, the Pacific board at all. So, you know, um, not going to see that coming uh, the first time. But uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens next time around. So this is how the board ended up. Four turns for an Axis victory. And uh, we'll see y'all next time.